Welcome back. You're still watching Network Africa on Channels Television. We're looking at our top stories still at this time. We're looking at what's happening in Kenya regarding security. Now, there were highly emotional scenes at Nairobi mortuary yesterday as grieving relatives and colleagues identified the victims massacred by Al-Shabaab gunmen at a Kenyan university. The gunmen from the Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab stormed Garissa University College and killed at least 148 people on Thursday, April the 2nd, in the worst attack on Kenyan soil since the U.S. Embassy was bombed back in 1998. The siege ended nearly 15 hours after the attackers shot their way into the campus in a pre-dawn attack, sparing Muslim students and taking more, many Christians hostage. Relatives and colleagues of the dead students arrived at the Nairobi mortuary on Sunday and had to go through the grueling experience of having to identify their loved ones. Joining us now in studio is a clinical psychologist, Dr. Charles Ume, who will be explaining to us the psychological implications of experiences like this. Dr. Charles, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you for having me. Now, um, just like the story we just read, or I just read now about people having to identify their loved ones, and also we, we also heard a particular instance of a woman who was actually called on phone and told to listen to her daughter's last words just before she was killed. How do situations like this impact on one's psyche? Well, you can see um, it's a tragic loss to the uh, relations. And the first thing is like it wasn't expected. And one thing that matters in grieving is the suddenness. Okay, um, because of that, the emotional impact will be more on these people. It's a kind of and an unexpected uh, situation. Somebody you saw probably two days ago now, very healthy, but suddenly gone. It's not like somebody that has been ill, that you are like preparing for the grieving. No, it's unexpected, and it's going to throw a lot of them off balance. And emotionally, they are in a kind of a wreck presently. Now, when we hear statements made by the group, for instance, saying that this attack, this last one, is just a preview of things to come. What does that do to the mindset of Kenyans, knowing that this might not be over? Yeah, it, it, it puts a kind of fear in them because nowhere, no place is now safe. And you see that a lot of people will not be sleeping well anymore because they are going to be agitated. They are going to be looking out for where it might go wrong. Their apprehension is going to be very high now. Now, if it could happen in a school like this, where else can it not happen? Even uh, the, the, going to the market or any social uh, a, a, a situation or could be, trigger a lot of fear in the mindset of every Kenyan now, okay? And that is going to affect, affect their general functioning. Now, how can, is, there, is it possible from your experience in, in clinical psychology for normalcy to ever be achieved in this kind of situation? Yes, it depends on how you are looking at it. When you are talking about this kind of situation, are we saying such ugly situation is going to be quelled? If people are sure that, okay, the government is in control, they are going to checkmate whatever that is happening, then it could give them a kind of a sucker to look up to a uh, solution inside. But if, uh, like it is now, no, you don't know what is happening, and that fear alone is going to kill more people than the actual event, okay? The unexpectedness of all these incidents, the truth, and yet nothing is checkmating all these things. So, in fact, the whole society is going to be living on an edge. But is there a way to, to, is there a way to address these matters by giving them some form of rehabilitation? Maybe the ones, exactly. for instance, the vict uh, families of the victims. Yes. What, what can be done for uh, them? Usually, that's what was psychological for us, Ed, when a traumatic situation happens like this. Now, the first thing to do is to look at the dangers, the inherent dangers. Now, those ones that were injured physically should be taken to the hospital for rehab. Now, a lot of them is going to be going through what is called acute stress disorder. That, by implication, simply means by being victims, by witnessing such uh, horrendous uh, activity, 
by also hearing of it on tellies and all these things, it's going to trigger off certain level of what? Tension in them. You see, a lot of them might not be sleeping well anymore. A lot of them will be agitated, very irritable, very confused, or might not even be able to concentrate, just like me and you now. Okay? Simply because of that traumatic event. And if it is not checkmated, because there are so many factors, as time goes on, that will might lead to post-traumatic stress disorder. That could be, uh, if nothing is done to these people now, after like a month or two about, a lot, some of them, that have certain tendencies, probably people that have been traumatized in the past, or females among them, females have been known to come down with PTSD after such a traumatic event, more than males. There are also um, situations where uh, uh, people that might have a kind of full-hearted personality that have the resilience, those ones might be able to cope. And studies have also shown that the educated ones might not come down with PTSD subsequently. But the most important thing is that provide psychological first aid to these people, okay, where they will be able to express their feelings and somebody could tell her it in such a way that they will understand what has happened without repressing it, okay? That way, they will be able to live with it and know that it's one of those incidents that can happen, okay? Those people that go through this kind of psychological first aid might not develop uh, PTSD. Dr. Charles Ume, as always, it's been a pleasure. We didn't get to speak to you on phone. I'm glad we have you in studio today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank we you are really much. grateful. We'll take another break now on Network Africa. When we come back, Somalia is doing what it can in order to check its security. It's now training its female officers in order to avoid cases like what we saw in Kenya. Please stay with us.